Hey, everybody, we are back. We're here, here being a very distributed remote type of here, but we are very, very lucky to have a very special interview with you uh, with two lovely guests. One of them is friend of the show, someone you've seen before, Matthew McCullough, and we have an extra, extra special guest, uh, Sang Chow. Is I say that correctly? Chow is true. Sorry. Chow's right, yes. Chow. Um, yeah, like, I mean, you know, friend of the show, Matthew McCullough, but um, I, I think we would really love, uh, Sian, to hear a little bit from you. What do you do? And I guess, who who are you and what do you do? <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm uh, Sian Chow, and I've been at Google now for eight years working on both Android and Pixel. I just took on a new role uh, a couple months ago as the new uh, GM of Android platform where we're bringing our product engineering and design functions together under one team. Um, th this is something that we've been looking forward to, at least I've been looking forward to for a while because it's it's an uh, opportunity for us to do really big things uh, and get things out to our uh, partners, developer ecosystem, our users faster. Um, and you know, I'm really excited about this because there's a there's a bunch of things going on in the industry right now. And uh, this is this is a great time for us to be working on it. That congrats on that new role. And you brought up a, a point that I kind of wanted to touch upon a little bit more about those organizational changes that you just mentioned. I wanted to ask you exactly how are those organizational changes going to benefit the Android platform as a whole? Yeah, I think um, the, the things that we really want to be able to get to our developers and our, um, our users will be able to make a lot of decisions to be able to go faster on those things. So bringing those functions together will allow us to move faster because uh, the, the things that we really need to get to users faster, especially in this really fast moving industry around um, AI, ML, and all the help that we want to be able to get to users. Uh, one of the things that we're, we will be talking about today is how we get to um, that state uh, for our users at high quality so they can do um, really useful things. Well, speaking uh, of going faster, go ahead, Win. Oh, yeah. I, I just wanted to give a chance, though, just to give, um, I know, oh, yeah. like I mentioned, Matthew McCullough, friend of the show, but Matthew, I friend wanted to give show. you a chance, friend of the show, I wanted to give you a chance to like speak to all of our hopefully uh, new listeners that haven't gotten a chance to meet you met, yet, Matthew, about what do you do uh, in terms of the Android world? Well, hello, Android faithful listeners. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking after with a uh, with a large team the Android developer experience, and so effectively, if you develop on it for the Android platform, we try to build the tools and the toolkits and the experience and the docs and DevRel and events that all uh, make that easy to do and an overall delightful experience. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm feeling very lucky because Thursday, uh, I'm going to be at JoyCon London, which I believe also Matthew will be. And I think you also are going to be kind of, uh, I guess, having a kind of co-production with JoyCon London by having also a release of the Android show. Is that right? This Thursday or today or totally October true. 31st? Yeah. Exactly. What even is time in this global distribution? By the way, <laughs> playtime Milan, I will then uh, use traditional transportation and airplane to get and be there with you at that DroidCon event. But um, this is very much the case. It actually goes to, to what we look after. We're trying to meet our Android developers wherever they are. DroidCon is one of those places. And to bring sometimes announcements. We have a few to share there. And then bring some progress, some workspaces, and then just give the opportunity to talk to the product and engineering leads who work on these features. Is often and we get really cool feedback and sometimes we can also kind of give them a few insights on how to use it even better. Right. So I actually saw some of the, the teasers that y'all have been putting out on, on social media about some of the things you'll be announcing. Ooh. You mentioned Gemini and Android Studio. That's a big topic. But um, Sian also just brought up about uh, Android platform related news. I kind of want to focus on a little bit on that first because that I think is huge in terms of, you know, it's, it's something that we've never seen before. This is this moving forward of the major release cycle and also accelerating how many minor releases you're doing with SDK changes. So can you tell us a bit more about the exact changes that you're making to the Android release schedule, um, including the rationale behind those changes? Yeah, so um, as I stated earlier, we want to get things out faster. Um, and we've been working on that for at least a couple of years now where you saw us going to these uh, continuous beta releases. You saw us going to QPRs. Um, that allowed us to get new functionality to our users uh, faster, but now we really want to focus on the developer ecosystem. How do we get that functionality, especially around AI uh, APIs and those kind of things? 
to our developers. So moving our launch in by a couple of months next year into uh, Q2 for 2025 allows our OEM partners, our device ecosystem partners, to be able to get that functionality out to our users, uh, lines up more with our, their device launches, but then gives us the opportunity to uh, look into, hey, can we do even more and get the uh, uh, update to developer SDK out um, twice a year? So we would be able to do that at the major release in Q2 next year. And then for our Q4 release, what we're calling a minor release, we can do uh, more API updates where we can add additional functionality uh, without breaking the existing things. That, that should really help our developers be able to get more things out to our users. And, and I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I think always like a big kind of big, big event every year for developers, at least uh, I'm a developer myself, that's my day job and is kind of like preparing and prepping and making sure that we're ready for the releases. And so I, I think I'm actually really I am really excited by the, you know, because I think we always like complain at y'all like, oh, we want this and we want that. Right. Uh, and of course, you're giving us what we want with like, which is more releases, more, you know, more features, more APIs. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, I guess it's always a little bit of work making sure that we're caught up for y'all. Um, are there any other ways that you kind of like foresee like app developers being impacted by these changes in, in release schedule? Like, are, are we going to have to make sure that we are not just ready for the major releases, but also the minor release as well? Yeah, if you, if you, if you go, back far, back, go back in time far enough, you'll remember that we actually used to do uh, point releases and mm -hmm. we ended up, I think what happened there was because we would, not only add new a APIs, but actually change existing functionality of APIs or deprecate APIs. It was really hard both for our OEM device partners to keep up and for our developers to keep up because the changes were just happening too quickly. I think this time around, we're doing it a little differently, right? We'll, we're going to make the, the changes to our APIs only at the major releases. And then for the minor releases, we're, only, we're going to do non-breaking changes. Uh, so you shouldn't have to do too much as a developer for our minor releases because we're only adding uh, API functionality. We're not going to change or modify any existing APIs, and we're not going to deprecate any uh, APIs. So anything that's targeting that SDK level for the major release should be fine. And then if you want to take advantage of the new APIs, you can. Beautiful. Good that's to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. So... <laughs> You know, something that I've noticed over the years, it's that it's really only been Google who pushes out updates that include the changes included in each quarterly platform release. So like, given that some of these new QPRs, including the Q4 release, um, will include new APIs that you, you know, kind of want developers to actually try out and use and prepare for in the next major release. Why should developers, you know, even bother testing them out, considering that only Pixel devices will be getting these minor releases ostensibly? I don't think that will necessarily be the case. We're working with our OEM device partners to uh, to help them um, be able to take these uh, minor releases as well, so that uh, it won't just be Pixel devices that will have the new APIs. That's great. Um, I I kind of curious out of out of personal curiosity, is the the trunk stable kind of initiative that you guys have done to rearchitect Android and you know make it easier to test and flag changes. Does that have anything to do with accelerating the rollout and also potentially making it easier for OEMs to um, accept these changes? So yes and yes. So <laughs> from the, the Chunk Stable perspective uh, for whether we're able to do this, I think Chunk Stable helped us to make sure that the quality of uh, what we're putting together is going to be there, right? It, it, when, you know, we started with the, Q, the QPRs, we started with this year-round beta uh, to ensure the outgoing quality is there, but then we needed to make sure that from a development perspective and our software lifecycle, that we were building in a way that was uh, upfront high quality. That allowed us to get the confidence to make sure that we could add these APIs, these non-breaking APIs more frequently throughout the year. Um, so that helps us with um, the that perspective. And from a OEM device perspective, we're working with our OEMs um, to make sure, and, and our SOC partners, to make sure that they're as close to trunk stable as possible so that there's much less work for our both our OEM, provi OEM SOC providers as well as our device providers that they have to do in order to keep up with the releases. That's great. So I've been following trunk stable um, quite closely. A lot of Android platform developers have, but 
as far as I know, Google hasn't put out any sort of like public facing blog post or anything explaining what this project is and why it's so important. So I'd like to take this opportunity to kind of ask you to give like a an explainer to our audience and I guess to the, the general public. What is Trunk Stable and why is it such a big deal? Trunk Stable, I think the reason why we haven't really talked about it that much is because it is really very much uh, internal software development life, life cycle change that we made. Uh, and, it, and it shouldn't affect how people think about Android or how we update or or the quality, right? We it's it is a way for us to optimize internally, um, and you know really okay the, at a high level, it's about how do we um, ensure that when we make changes and we add new functionality that we're not breaking uh, old functionality, right? It allows us to uh, experiment with long-term things, things that might take us uh, three months, six months, nine months, twelve months, or, or a couple years, uh, added to the um, the build without breaking existing functionality. In the past, when you tried to do that, uh, you can uh, make a lot, as a, as a software, a software developer, you know this, you can, you can have a lot of regressions if you're not being very careful about flagging features on and off. And so in a trunk stable model where everybody is now building into the same branch, essentially, you need to make sure you have all the tooling and capabilities to keep all of that work uh, separate and independent. Uh, speaking the truth there, Shan, thank you very much <laughs> about developer life. So I wanted to kind of go back to some of the uh, other things that you're announcing. So I know that I think everybody, Android faithful, both, you know, user and devs alike know that we are in an age of AI. And of course, we hear, we've heard a lot in the last like year and some change about Gemini. So can either of you tell us a little bit about what we can expect um, as developers, actually, and not just users uh, from Gemini coming up? Sure. I'll, uh, I'll take the first part, but Sian can add on. We, we think about Gemini in a couple of different layers. And the first one that I'll kind of mention is more on the developer tool side of things, because I wake up thinking about how can I help make developers, you know, have a more delightful, more productive, easier, easier day. So you, Quinn, you know, how can I make <laughs> work Thank you. more delightful? I'm trying. And I think <laughs> part, I, I separate it into the work into like the creative work, which I love doing, you know, many developers love doing the creative piece. But then there's a category of kind of like chores and toil. And no one's told me yet that they want more chores and toil in their life, like at least not yet. Uh, and so what we're trying to think about is that is a category that we're helping with. Some examples, um, making sure that you've got a great commit message. We uh, have a study that says 80% of commit messages in open source are non-descriptive. I mean, the volume is just not fantastic. So what can we do there? We can look at what you've changed. We can look at, you know, the intention of what you've changed. We can look at the, the comments that you've made and then try to craft a beautiful commit message and still, you know, give you developer in the loop, the ability to revise and polish it if you want. But now you're already starting from a much better place. So that's a concrete example of, of reducing that chore and toil and making doing the right thing easier, simpler, faster. Yeah, I I definitely feel that. And I, I've actually have used Gemini a bit in my day to day Android life. And as much as I think sometimes developers like to kind of do things themselves and control everything, I have to admit, um, not doing all the chores and doing the fun stuff of the creativity and, and letting kind of like, you know, like the hard part, I guess we'll say like the think the thinky part we'll say uh, has been pretty delightful. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got more I can share there too. That's like one entry point because I think almost everybody has had a commit message at some point in time, but the other, and maybe even experienced the benefits, but some of the other places that we're also touching, we think are, are chores and toil is, you know, remembering a method signature, right? Autocomplete <laughs> is not always perfect, but we can get a lot better when we use AI uh, to look at method signatures you've written. So not even just, you know, necessarily libraries that you're pulling in, maybe those can be well auto-completed, but your code, you know, that's another opportunity. And then to go beyond just method completion, but to think about intention and uh, it's pretty steerable some of the fun stuff to do so maybe kind of a little experiment for those of our devs and in, in our shared audience today <laughs> is if you type comments that suggest what you want to do next and then go to get autocomplete um, is kind of your way of like nudging the model just a little bit and doing the right thing at the same time because sometimes you don't have the best commented code so this is now like a positively reinforcing loop where if you type the right comment to describe what you want to happen you'll get an even better recommendation for the code autocomplete so two for one 
I like it. So it's it's like it's like not it, Gemini is almost becoming your coding buddy, so that you kind of get make each other better as you go, rather than just being a strict reference that is a little bit more I don't know uh, objective or just kind of neutral. It's it's kind of like a back and forth, it, like kind of conversational, just like the other kind of ways that we're that you're that, that you know you've been we've been talking about using Gemini. Very much so. And we're thinking of this across, you know, a whole bunch of surfaces. We, we did commit message. We talked a minute ago. We talked, you know, code complete. That's kind of another form. But even the other surfaces, so some of the experiments that, you know, we're thinking about far into the future is like, you know, target SDK upgrades. That's a chore that everybody has to do on a yearly basis. Looking down in the app quality insights and trying to figure out, like, where did that come from? Why is that? Do you have a recommendation where this, this problem might be coming from? And is it common? So we're really trying to go to every surface from problem to creation to commit message to I don't remember that over in the chat side and bring just that little bit of, of helpfulness that you described so well to all of those various pains and surfaces. I did want to ask real quick though because again like as I mentioned um, even even when you give us shiny tools, we still have like, you know, certain ways that we want to do things or we like to keep a little control. I know that kind of most teams that I've worked on, we've kind of kind of <laughs> inserted a lot of our own, I guess, boilerplate or own kind of team ceremony into things. So mm -hmm. for example, like, I don't know, issue, like, so each of us have issue trackers, whether it's Jira, Notion, or whatever you want to use. And for example, we have like customs around adding, adding in like uh, issue numbers into commit messages, or even just like the way that we maybe use like code fram formatters, because we all picky and we all have certain opinions about how many spaces, to, well, it's tabs of spaces, I feel like that's settled. But so is there a way that we can integrate these kind of practices and preferences in with like the help that Gemini is giving us? That's a it's a high bar to reach, but we're going to try to get there, and we'll get uh, get to it a kind of a few steps at a time. I think in terms of the let's say bug number being referenced, um, you actually see that already happen a little bit today, even without us doing an explicit feature for it, because it's often mentioned in people's comments that they put in there, or maybe some of the roll up commits that that are going to that point. So. There's a way that the AI model and looking in the context might already bring that into the commit message. We don't have any uh, plugin directly though that connects to those systems. So I'll put that on the I'll put that on the feature backlog to think about for that one. The second piece is though for styling, I can say a little bit more. We have started thinking about what are some of the system level prompts, the system prompts that you might want to put into Gemini and Android Studio that would generally steer the whole experience. You know, much like people are creating uh, bots and gems, like you'd create gems on uh, the public Gemini that people chat with today. I, I think that's that looks to be a fruitful pursuit for us. And that would give you the ability to steer to style and preference, um, much like you would, you know, setting up a linter prior to the AI era uh, for particular code styles. So you just brought up an interesting screen, not fully there, love the ideas, and we accidentally already have made some incremental progress and we're gonna make intentional progress in some of the other areas. Either is great. Accidental, intentional. We accept all improvements. I love it. <laughs> Some of also, just, just to make sure, did we decide on tabs or spaces? Uh, I'm I sorry. Have, what right do you now, think? We have a great working relationship, <laughs> at least between Ken and I, and I'm going to keep it there. Yeah, like, yeah. This is like serial totally. commas, right? It yeah, Put totally. <laughs> we're just not, we're just not going to touch it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know, but when you can certainly have a preference, and so can Michelle. But for you and ICN, it's off limits. Yeah, yep. So you. Uh, you, you brought up an interesting point at the end there, Matthew, about prompts, and I wanted to ask you a bit more about that prompt library feature that you're announcing. Exactly, what kind of prompts do you think developers will be saving or reusing frequently using this feature? You know, I, I I've got a couple of ideas for this, but um, you know, some of the ones that we've seen is like taking. Uh, a code and removing recursion from it would be an example for this case. You know, make uh, make something inline, but where it's grabbing potentially fragments of code from across multiple files. You know, we've seen some of these things. We've seen hints of these. Like these are not brand new ideas in the actual explicitly coded functionality of IDEs in the past. Right click on a method and you know extract or the like. But what becomes difficult is when that starts to become spidered across your code base or when it's not a simply one link, one clear kind of step to take. Um, so I think you probably have seen many of the ideas that we want to explore without making this an announcement or a reveal today in the right click menus before, but where those couldn't quite get the job done, AI is empowering us to be able to look across the entire code base um, 
to do that. We have some ideas in the future too that go a little bit to some of the enterprise discussions that we'll talk about and make some announcements in a few days. But using more context of your code uh, actually gives us, when this goes back to your question, gives us more style, intention, and even naming. And our method rename function right now, we're getting delightful feedback on that because instead of just, you know, uh, assuming you like fill in the blank or use the things that were in the call stack above it, it's actually using comments, descriptions, and surrounding methods to derive intent. And one example that I saw from a friend of mine is they were working on a podcast app and it used the specific intention that they had in the method names. And it was just cool to see it not just be generic, but actually be specific to the type of app that they were building. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I did want to go back to, and, and I apologize, Matthew. Um, Sian, if you weren't aware, I, I'm, I, I feel like Matthew's probably heard questions like this from me over the years. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry and, and going to introduce you to the questions about privacy and proprietary code, because I, I do see like, you know, a lot of times we do feel like, um, especially for Gemini tools, we get the most bang for our buck when Gemini is able to kind of introspect our project and our code. But of course, for those of us that work at big corporations, there's always questions of, privacy, proprietary yeah. code, and things like that. And I, I, I think even with prompts, you know, I mean, obviously the code has a lot of information in it, but even by yeah. extension, prompts could potentially contain proprietary business and engineering information. What can we tell our managers and stakeholders to assure them that, you know, that that, that information is safe, even when we're taking advantage of, you know, uh, Gemini and, and prompts? That's great. Well, I'm going to walk a very fine line to make sure that my, my colleagues are delighted with me, but uh, stay tuned for a conversation coming up at the DroidCon for the big reveal of this. Uh, but what we are thinking about is kind of two categories. The one where you're working maybe more on open source or less sensitive code bases, and the second category being exactly what you described. Highly sensitive code bases, you know, that need the full privacy and trust never to be used for, you know, a training or public enhancement and where you have uh, absolutely all the promises that would traditionally come with a cloud offering. And what we've done, uh, what you'll hear about this week is that we've partnered with Google Cloud to use the same promises that they give uh, for their other services and being able to carry it with Gemini and carry that over into Gemini and Android Studio. Okay, well, thank you both very much for answering all our questions about, you know, the Android platform news and also Gemini and Android Studio. Uh, before we wrap things up, I, there is one last question that I wanted to ask, and it's about this little guy here and the dessert that he'll be eating next year. Um, is Baklava really going to be the dessert name for the next major Android release? Wow. Uh, yeah, so just like Mainline, uh, which I'm sorry, not mainline, just like trunk stable, which is very much an internal thing. The dessert names are still very much an internal thing. Uh, our, our internal developers, they really uh, love it. Uh, and yes, this year we did decide to start with B because why start with A when you can start with B? No, I'm just kidding. So last time we were at Cupcake where we started with C. So mm -hmm. I guess now we can start with B. And then maybe when we roll over again, we'll do an A. Uh, but uh, baka, it's it's a great dessert, um, and it yeah, is. maybe maybe it will be baklava. I don't know. What do you think, Matthew? What, what should we do? Uh, I love desserts in general, so pretty much whether it's A to Z, I'm in. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> Awesome. I, I really did want to hear what, what Matthew or uh, Sian, you would think a, a good X starting dessert would be, but we'll let you think about that. And hopefully next time we talk to you, you can let us know, but we really want to thank you for your time. Like obviously Matthew was in like about five different places at once. Sian, we really know that you're probably really busy, like in this new role, getting started, getting your hands and everything. So we really appreciate you taking time to come and talk to the Android faithful. Uh, and this particular Android faithful dev is super, super grateful for all your work. So. All right. Great. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us. And uh, what a nice opportunity to talk to the people that every day we get up and go to work to serve. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, um, we'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.